so I've, I've gone through the past three years, three, maybe four years of my life where I'll go for months at a time and not be able to work. Mm -hmm. So I had to create some type of passive income so that I could do that. Right. Cause I didn't want to miss those last weeks, days, months of my dad's life. And I wanted to be there for him. And so um, that's really where, you know, I started teaching my own agents about how to, you know, how to do it. And then I was like, other agents need this. You know, your business can change people's lives, but you don't yet have the right words to inspire them to take action. Imagine the changes you will create in your business as you tap into the secrets of ethical influence and positive persuasion to not only better serve your clients, but also to supercharge your financial freedom. I'm your host, Jason Lynette, and welcome to the Hypnotic Language Hacks podcast. I help entrepreneurs and business owners just like you to close more premium sales. And no, this isn't about tricking or manipulating people, not at all. It's about helping your prospects to appropriately sell themselves into your products or services. Please hit subscribe and get all the episodes now at jasonlinette.com. Running a massively profitable business, selling people a product or a service turns out to actually be a massively noble thing as long as you are solving someone's problem. If you are operating from the premise of get rich quick and how can I capitalize on people's problems, we need to have some words. <laughs> when meanwhile, instead, if you are identifying that a specific client or even an entire market has a very unique problem, and if you have a way of resolving that problem, creating a better solution, you will have a business that easily scales year after year, creates incredible goodwill in the world and in your communities, and will easily continue to grow long after that as well. Which is where I'm so excited to have Amanda Williams, the traveling realtor, on this week's episode of Hypnotic Language Hacks. Which, yes, this is a podcast that typically comes out to you with specific linguistic strategies for ethical influence and positive persuasion. Yet at the same time, having an incredible guest like Amanda on, who looked at a specific challenge within her market and realize there's other ways to serve people. In fact, there's not just other ways, as she's going to share inside of this conversation, there's at least six ways for real estate agents to be profitable in whatever market is out there. And you're going to hear the story as to where the branding of the traveling realtor came from, because think about the real estate market, even if that's not your industry. Very often, people look at that as a very linear business. Someone wants to sell their home, the agent helps them to sell their home. Someone wants to buy a house. The agent helps them to buy their house. But it turns out if you look at any specific problem that your clients or clientele or potential clients are facing, to do exactly what Amanda did, to go inside of that problem and look at it from a slightly different angle, you start to realize there are so many other solutions that are out there. And I'll give you the biggest hint as to where we're going to go inside of this conversation. There's an inventory issue in real estate right now, where if you are trying to sell your home to buy another home, you might have to put an offer out, which requires what's called a contingency, which makes it so your offer is not officially ratified until you've sold your home. But meanwhile, if someone else is out there who also wants to buy the other house, they might even be offering less money. But without that contingency, that's a better offer. Well, Amanda has gone deep inside of that problem and realized there's another solution. And this is something that she has done for her clients for a lot of years, but it's also something that now that she teaches other people how to do. And again, this whole image that you now create in your mind of Amanda Williams, the traveling realtor, starts to set a different story versus the agent who's in the car driving to property after property hoping this couple finds the house of their dreams or not. But the ability then to run a business that allows her to travel the country, travel the world and set up business dreams all over, not just for herself, but also for her clients and students as well. Even if you're not in the real estate world, listen through this conversation. It is a masterclass of identifying how to better serve an audience how to continue a conversation, and how to create massive value in any industry. Now, then again, if you are interested in real estate, 
I'm going to be checking out some of these links as well myself, which as always, you can head over to the show notes at jasonlinette.com. My last name is spelled with one N and two, two T's, no extra letters at the end. So L-I-N. E-T-T, and then throw a forward slash in the number 16. This is episode number 16 with Amanda Williams, the traveling realtor. That'll bring you over there for the links to the webinar that she's going to share with you to check out the social media work that she's doing. And here's a bit of a bio before we jump into this outstanding conversation. Amanda Williams has been involved with real estate since 2008. She's been a private money lender for fix and flip deals. She's flipped her homes herself as well as bought and sold homes and lease options subject to an owner finance deals and she also has been a licensed realtor in North Carolina since 2013. She serves both buyers as well as sellers in that role. She currently manages a nice sized long-term and short-term rental portfolio of her own, but even better, Listen to this conversation because she helps other agents to reach their goals in real estate, brokerage, and investments. And again, helping people to build their own lifestyle design inside of what they do, where we're not dependent upon one physical location. In the age of 2020 and everything in the 21st century, the world has become a whole lot smaller, and you're going to be inspired by Amanda's story. So let's jump in. Before we get started today, If you want to easily grab people's attention, naturally build authority, and organically have your prospects wanting more from you, even before you've made an offer, I've created a step-by-step program to help you to do just that. It's called Business Influence Systems. And this is your opportunity now to visit jasonlinette.com to get a free behind the scenes tour of the exact hypnotic persuasion strategies that you can ethically use to better start up or scale up your business. If you want a proven framework to boost your confidence, attract premium clients, and inspire more people to take action with you, get Business Influence Systems now at jasonlinette.com. All right, we are here with Amanda Williams, the traveling realtor. Amanda, how are you? I'm doing great, Jason. How are you? I'm great, thanks for asking. And specifically invited you on to be here on the program. As I look at people who take an accepted business model and find a different way of doing it. So for those that you're new to, could you intro a little bit more about what you do? Absolutely. So I teach real estate agents how to create multiple streams of income, um, focusing on passive income. And the biggest thing that we do is we teach how to run an Airbnb, short-term rental, and midterm rental using other people's properties, by the way. Nice. Oh, that's different. So yeah. not necessarily the game of buying up a number of properties and listing yourself, but somehow stepping into that role of managing someone else's property. Exactly. Well, actually, you're not managing. Um, we're teaching a little bit different. So we're actually teaching how to go in there, sign up a lease that you can actually sublease out. So mm-hmm. you're pretty much, you know, you're leasing the property for whatever the rent is. You're going in, you're making it beautiful, you're furnishing it, and then you're marketing that as a short-term rental. So the landlord loves us. <laughs> um, and it's also giving us the ability to scale our business um, to a point that is really, you know, you can't scale like that if you have to own all of the properties. There's just no way. You're putting hundreds of thousands of dollars into these properties. Yeah, that's incredible. Especially, I mean, you look at the biggest sort of hurdle in most things, real estate is either one, coming up with the money for the down payment. And then here comes this ongoing payment if it's going to be financed. So really building a system for people to get up and running even sooner. So I'm curious to kind of rewind back. Was this the business goal from the start? Is this something that developed over time? What's, What's kind of the origin story to this? Gosh, the, the origin of this is is when my dad got sick with cancer, we ended up taking him to Mexico for a treatment down there and we put our personal house on Airbnb. And so we started out with Airbnb and we were like, wow, like this is really good. So then we started buying properties and putting them on as Airbnb. And then we got smart. We were like, why are we buying all these properties when we can just rent the properties and turn and then turn them into Airbnbs? And so that's what we did up until the time that COVID hit. (laughs) And, um, you know, COVID definitely took us out for a little bit, um, maximum two weeks. 
but we figured it out mm -hmm. and we started doing all of our marketing differently. And now we've gone into, we're still doing like some Airbnb and short-term rental, but our main bread and butter right now are midterm rentals, which is 30, 60, 90 day rentals. Yeah. Yeah. Which we're planning on moving in the next year and we're planning on selling, renting, and then buying. So we might be chatting again sometime very soon. <laughs> Though yes. what, I, what I wanted to chat about here is again, this discovery that here's a way to look at the business a bit differently. Was there a specific turning point in there where suddenly you realized that there was a much bigger opportunity? Because I say this to someone who I know that, yes, you teach others how to do this, yet it's something that clearly you're still actively doing yourself and learning along the way. Was there a turning point where you realized that here was a greater opportunity to be had by changing the business model? Well, yeah, I mean, it's like you either pivot or you die when COVID hit. Mm -hmm. And so what really hit us really hard was we have all of our eggs in one basket. We have everything in Airbnb inventory. And if Airbnb wants to say, oh, due to COVID, we're not going to allow any bookings, then, I mean, our whole business is turned upside down on its head. And so that really hit us. Like we had never thought like, who would think that something could happen in the entire world that could just stop everything like COVID has done. Mm -hmm. And so that's when we really started thinking, you know what, we've already got our website, we've already got our business name, we're doing some branding, but we're, we're not really doing a ton of branding for ourselves. And so we really just, just hit it home with, with branding Carolina Furnished Rentals and doing videos and, and driving people to our website not having to go through yeah. Airbnb at all. And so we've started doing that and that's been huge. And Jason, I know you teach, you know, business owners how to, to say the right things, right? To attract those clients in. And that's what we're doing. And we're attracting people who are looking to move into our area. So we're going after relocation people. So people who, you know, jobs and family, and especially now with family, because they want to be close to their family. So that's, that's really what pivoted us. And uh, thank God, thank God it did. Yeah. Because like who, what smart business person has, has all of their eggs in one basket to a company like Airbnb that can literally shut you down in one day? Well, there's a trade-off to that because when you find something that clearly is working, that's when we ought to double, triple, or even more down, you know, to throw all that effort into that. Though this is reminding me of a good friend of mine that part of his business used to be doctors had continuing educational requirements. And like any of us, they would procrastinate to the very last moment and suddenly go, oh, wait, I need this by next week. And he had built an entire empire of offering educational resources that they could watch, they could take an exam, and they would get those units. And this was, over time, a multi-million dollar business. But then what happened? The organizations governing the doctors decided to go for a little bit of added value for their members. Hey, everybody, guess what? Here's your free library you get with membership. And overnight, his business disappeared. Though I love what you said about if you can be the one who is now, I'm going to use the word carefully here, but controlling the dialogue. If they're on Airbnb, they're on someone else's site, they're on someone else's platform. And if suddenly even a city changes a rule, that could disappear. So mm -hmm. by creating your own mechanism. So how is it specifically that that dialogue has changed now that they're coming to your site, to your information instead? So it's different because we're going after um, a different clientele. So Airbnb focuses mostly on the vacation rental. So, mm -hmm. you know, weekend stays, maybe a week stay, which are they're great. Um, however, that's really not my preferred clientele. My preferred clientele is that family who's going to be relocating to the area. And I can partner up, you know, them with one of my amazing real estate agents in that area. And then they will go sell a house, right? They'll, they'll, the, I'm going to tell you this, and you could probably help me with my verbiage on this, but when you approach someone who is moving into the area with the conversation of, I have this amazing, you know, short-term rental, it's completely furnished, you just bring your suitcase in, you can stay there for a week while we're looking for houses, or you can stay there for three months while we're looking for houses. This is going to take the pressure off of that client, because 
with our market right now, they're coming in and they're feeling like they have to put an offer on a house like that day or that weekend, because if they don't, the house is going to be gone. Mm -hmm. And there's not a lot of inventory. And yeah, so we, we were chatting about that. that before we jumped in that again, the game of how, you know, especially now people are wanting to move faster because otherwise, you know, the risk of a hotel, the dangers of whatever else may be out there. Uh, so giving that option of, you know, whether it's a week, whether it's several months, here's an alternative. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And they can take it week by week or whatever they want to do. It's just so flexible and it takes the stress off of them. It's that that huge stress of feeling pressured, especially, you know, pairing them up with one of my real estate agents as well. And, and we're all, you know, in this together and we're just helping them feel more comfortable. And that's the thing. We saw a problem and we're solving the problem, right? Yeah. <laughs> Which let's go, let's go inside of that as a strategy. You started with what was the problem that they were facing? And the solution was, this is the way that everyone does it. This is the formula that everybody's aware of is that maybe in real estate, you're putting in a contract on a new home, but there's also this contingency thing that makes it so it's dependent upon us selling the previous home. When now here's an alternative, they can already be sold. This is becoming personal coaching now for me, by the way. So thank you, Amanda. <laughs> we can have that experience where now it's already sold. So the offer is just the offer. So by identifying what the need of the market was, matching what, what their perceived solution may be, but then also pivoting as you are to go, here's another way we can do that, which may be even better. Absolutely. Is there yeah, a story a that is, there, yeah, is there a story that comes to mind of working with somebody where this maybe wasn't their expectation and suddenly this became the solution for everything? Well, yeah. I mean, it's funny because a lot of realtors really didn't even think about, you know, telling their clients about short-term rentals, um, it happens a lot. It happens a lot when people are selling their homes and building new homes because the builders are running late and all kinds yeah. of stuff. And so they're essentially like homeless for weeks at a time. Same thing when, um, you know, when they're selling their house, exactly what you're talking about. They sell their house and then all of a sudden their new house gets pushed a week or two or even, you know, three sometimes out. So it there's just so many scenarios that this is so, so important. And for the realtor to know about a business like ours, it adds value to their client and it makes the realtor look like a rock star. Mm -hmm. And so often, hypnotic language hacks, so often it comes down to the specific phrasing that now introduces a new idea, a new premise into someone's mind. And as soon as it's there, it becomes that aha kind of phrasing. So what's kind of that, if it is an elevator pitch, if it is that short messaging, how is it that this is typically presented? For the real estate agents or sure. for the client? Let, let's say for the client. For the client? Well, I mean, it's exactly that, you know, that you you as the real estate agent will know, you know, if your client needs a, a short-term place to stay. Um, and then we're actually doing a lot of external marketing right now as well to attract those people to us. Mm -hmm. And what I'm finding, <laughs> I'm actually attracting a lot of different types of people. I'm not just attracting guests. I'm attracting um, investors who mm -hmm. want to purchase properties and then rent them to us so that we can add them to our short-term rental portfolio. Oh, nice. So I'm finding a lot of those right now. Uh, and then I'm also finding a lot of other real estate agents that are saying, wait, what are you doing? Like, can I do this? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and so that's what led us. Uh, at first, I have a team or not a team. I have a tribe. Um, I have about 150 agents that I work with personally. And at first, I was just teaching them how to do it. So we've I've got agents across the U.S. right now running their own little you know, short-term rental businesses, but it came time where I was like, okay, I'll put a course, a course together. And so now we have the course and all that stuff. So it's, it's funny because real estate agents, they, a lot of them don't think about multiple streams of income. Yeah. That's something I've seen to be true too. Yeah. You know, it's that one sale and, and they sell a house, they get the money, they go pay all their bills. And it's like, oh my God, I got to go sell another house. And it's just this hamster on a wheel feeling. And so that's where I became really passionate about, all right, how many streams of income can we make you? Because when you have that desperate, like, I got to sell a house, I got to sell a house, I got to sell a house, it comes out, you know, it, you, you just bleed it. It's, it's just yeah. there. Which correct me on this, uh, there, there's a commission from the rental now 
there's a commission from the sale of the home. There's a commission from the purchase. So technically speaking, which, you know, that, that agent may just be on two sides of that. They may have their selling agent. This person may be the buying agent. So at least there's two possible commissions there rather than one. So by satisfying the need of eliminating the, let's call it the immediacy of the purchase of the new property, now there's actually a potential for more income, which lines up everything on the ethical side, because now we're serving that client in a much better way. Here's how you can kind of relax into this process. And now when something does become available as inventory is a major issue in that world right now, as something then becomes available, you're going to have the best offer to make because there's going to be no contingencies. You're right. And and that's just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, there's there's about six ways to make money um, as the host realtor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was a that was a dangle of a hook there. <laughs> so so what are <laughs> what are those six ways? Well, number one, or the four best you know, ones. I'm, we'll go for a little bit of a cliffhanger. Okay, the four best ones. <laughs> so um, you know, a question that most hosts don't even think to to ask, and most realtors don't even think to ask when they're working with someone who are, who's relocating is, do you already have a realtor to sell your house in Washington? And if they don't, then you refer them a realtor. So that's a that's a, a referral fee. So normally, you know, we do 25%, whatever. Um we negotiate that, right? So that's one way. And then if you're the host as well, then obviously you're making that um, that income, that nightly income or that monthly income, however you want to do it. And then on top of that, yes, you're selling them a house or you could be like me and refer all of those leads out to your team, which is exactly what I do. Um, so you're getting that. And then with my firm, my firm actually pays you um, another three and a half to 4% on top and they give us stock as well. And that's just the beginning. That's that's like just like the beginning of this whole thing. There's so yeah. many other ways to make money on it as well. Right, which the whole way through it's serving them even better. And uh, th there's two things I want to highlight here. One is the fact that you were already doing it. So we, we sometimes meet that person and let's not put this category down entirely because they also can provide a lot of good in any market. There may be that person who recognized a need and goes, oh, how do I teach people a better way to do this? That way I can monetize it. Yet clearly along the way, anyone who tracks what you post on social media sees that, you know, oh, we just furnished this property. So we're seeing in real time what's working right now, which is giving it that, that greater credibility so, you know, as these issues pop up where suddenly now there's travel restrictions, travel regulations, there's a way that's around it. Uh, so, so to see that this was something, what, what was that moment for you where it became that desire to then go off and teach this rather than just keep it all to yourself? I mean, it goes back to my dad. Like, so I've, I've gone through the past three years three, maybe four years of my life where I will go for months at a time and not be able to work. Mm -hmm. So I had to create some type of passive income so that I could do that, right? Because I didn't want to miss those last weeks, days, months of my dad's life. And I wanted to be there for him. And so um, that's really where, you know, I started teaching my own agents about how to, you know, how to do it. And then I was like, other agents need this. Because I can't be the only agent with with aging parents or with children that need, you know, more one on one time or, you know, whatever that is. And, and it may just be you want to travel more <laughs> like, OK, go travel more. I'm a traveling <laughs> realtor. Um, but the, the reality is and especially right now with with the way the world is right now, I think it's really important just to you got to have multiple streams of income. You just have to. I think everyone I, I does. I'll lead with this uh, question in a very appropriate way uh, with my example first that, you know, as I took the model of the education that I was doing in my industries where uh, I would put on a class, I would even do like a two hour meetup event and I would be getting these requests from around the world, which would be that, hey, are you going to live stream this? Hey, could you film that? I'll pay for a replay of it. And that's what started my educational business, where at the origin of everything is this one person to another service of helping them, let's say, resolve a fear, overcome a confidence issue, change a series of habits. And it wasn't just after that monetary gain that by, that by focusing on how I could duplicate myself 
and educate people around the world. Yes, the income naturally went up, but the trade-off then became appropriately, I got to become much more selective at what I did to the point that, as you've shared, here's someone that you can now refer to another agent. Here's someone who calls me for a specific issue and I can go, you know what? My friend Kelly in Washington state is who I would ask questions about how to do that. Everything's now online. Call her. This ability that we can now surround ourselves with the people we know we're going to do the best work for. So what is it that you've been finding that you've been able to do better? What benefit can you now pass on to your clients that is now even better because all of these other streams are running as a result of that? I love that. So thank you for sharing that because you just gave me like memories of like, oh yeah, like that I did. I used to only do this kind of stuff for my team. And then like people were like, oh, film it. Right. So absolutely. Um, You know, I think one of the biggest benefits right now is being able to take everything virtual, you Mm -hmm. know, um, doing virtual summits and challenges and just all kinds of stuff like that. And, and that's more for, uh, for reaching other real estate agents to help them with their mindset and, you know, just, just the different ways to think about money and the so different correct, ways to think about. Correct me on this. Your actual clients though, are also seeing that stuff too. And that's also elevating that clearly Amanda's the person to work with. I don't know how much of that my clients are actually seeing. Like okay. I'm, I'm not like full, the, I'm not the hundred percent face of our business yeah. for uh, Carolina furnished rentals. Mm-hmm. I am there. Um, but I have a social media gal that runs that. And then my partner, my other half, um, he helps us with the, with the Carolina furnished rentals and he really runs that business, but everything that we do, it, it has our logo on it. It's not my face. Nice. So yeah. everything that I do with the traveling realtors, it's my face. So it's, a, it's a, I guess, um, I keep it a little separate. But then, of course, if you go to my personal profile, then you're going to see that, hey, you know, my business page is made of the traveling realtor. And, oh, by the way, I am the CEO of Carolina Furnished Rentals. And so I do have a lot of the realtors who go and cyber stalk me. Um, they'll click on <laughs> the Carolina Furnished Rentals just to kind of see, like, well, what does she have going on? Uh, so yeah, but as far as the clients go, I think the clients, it's, it goes back to just, you know, giving them that, that good feeling of not being pressured to purchase a house Mm -hmm. immediately and giving them that also. I was gonna say, I love the way that you drew that world out because it's where I meet people who are stuck on, do I build the personal brand? Do I create the corporate image? And the answer to that, as you've shared, is to identify, well, who's the target audience? You know, if they want to learn, they want to see someone like you who is clearly living the life and demonstrating what's working now. Yet for the end user of the home, they're looking for a home. And yes, it may be a side benefit that this is who you are and this is what you do. Yet that's a story that's more about them, which is why now that's the Carolina Realty Company as opposed to you. Yeah. It's a great way of defining that. So traveling realtor, where did that come from? What's the story behind that? (laughs) Well, uh, gosh, I was a crazy chaotic real estate agent and, Mm. you know, buyers, sellers, working, working, working. Uh, We were also flipping houses. We had rental properties, uh, long-term rental properties. And uh, we had went to a, a mastermind. We do a lot of masterminds, like real estate masterminds. And I was sitting on a hammock and I'm thinking, how in the world can I mix my real estate passion with my traveling passion? And that's where I came up with the brand, Amanda the Traveling Realtor. And when I first started, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a podcast and I'm going to interview realtors who love to travel. And we're just going to all get together and just love to travel. And then uh, it would turn into like some type of retreat or something. And that was kind of my idea behind it. And it's funny how that's evolved uh, just over the last three years, really. And now we do CE cruises. Uh, We have the whole traveling realtor brand, uh, CE cruises and retreats and just like all all kinds of fun stuff. So yeah, that's where it came from. But it's really just how to how to mix, you know, what you're passionate about, which for me is travel. So I'm I'm attracting other real estate agents that love to travel and we're a perfect fit. Yeah. Which then appropriately is drawing in the people who want that. And meanwhile, I I think to my wife is actually also an agent and we helped to sell my parents' home, which because that was a different area, 
required that we do a referral credit for someone down in that area just to get onto the MLS and get everything on the local side taken care of. And, and that agent was somebody who goes, yeah, I love being in this area because all of the cities are really close to each other and I don't have to drive so much, <laughs> which that's a different set of goals than what you present. So it's attracting in those people who want more of that message and appropriately kind of propelling away and also giving enough of that brand that for the person who that's not a fit for is going another direction. You are very respectively active on your social media channels too, in terms of projecting that brand and drawing out what that story is. Could you talk with us about some of the strategies behind what it is that you're doing online? Yeah. So, I mean, I have help. It's not all me. Right. Um, but the, the main thing to my social media presence is um, I just want, I just want people to know that like you can get off the hamster wheel, mm -hmm. right. You don't have to continue to think you, you have to sell a house and, and then go pay all your bills and go sell another house. It doesn't have to be that way. And so everything that I post, it always leads back to you can create the life that you desire. You know, you have you do have to have passive income and multiple streams of income as well. And so that's the that's what feeds in to everything else that we are doing. And I'm also a big believer in video and Facebook lives and um, stories and just letting people know who you are as a person. And when you're an authentic person and you're genuine and you're not there to like sell them something, you just yeah. like, I love sharing. <laughs> I love it. I love sharing, you know, what we're doing and how we're doing it. And I think that's where you get the best following because then people will reach out to you you know, there's a lot of people that watch my social media and I have no idea they're watching my social media. And then they will reach out to me like a year later and be like, I've been following you for years and I know about this and I know about that. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And then it, then they're ready to talk, but not everyone is ready to talk when they first meet. They, they have to really get to know you as a person. And I believe that's where social media comes in because if you're doing videos and you're posting and you're putting your life out there for them, then they feel like they know you. Mm -hmm. And I like that. I love it when people reach out to me and they're like, oh my God, I know this and this and this. And I'm like, that's awesome. You know, some people think it's creepy, but I'm like, no, that's cool. I like it. That's why I do social media. <laughs> so to unpack the strategy, um, value first to the client followed by the education as to how others can replicate it, looking outside of the box, thinking outside of the box to solve a problem in a unique way that actually provides a better service. And please tell me you've already used this as a headline somewhere. If not, I look forward to receiving it. That way you two can go from hammock wheel to hammock. Hamster wheel to hammock. <laughs> oh I messed gosh. it up, but you get the intention. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, we, we gotta play with that a little bit. Yeah, hamster wheel to hammock. That use that. Uh, this is this has been great. And again, I'll, I'll share the, um, the the subtext also behind this in, this intro onto the program that we met at a conference in April of 2019. And to say it politely, that was an event where there were a lot of people there who were kind of in a startup phase. And as soon as we were connected online, it became the oh, she's serious. She's actually doing this. Wait, how are you doing that? <laughs> and, and to see it play out, to see the consistency, the congruency of the message. So excited people have been able to hear this on the program here today. So Amanda, where can people find you? How can they best get in contact with you? Where can they learn more? I, I appreciate that, Jason. So uh, my website is amandathetravelingrealtor.com. If you want one of my free trainings, I do a free passive income training. So you can actually just do amandathetravelingrealtor.com slash passive. And that will lead you to the free passive income training. It's about a 50 minute training, but it's really good. So I encourage you to definitely uh, download that and see what it's all about. Cool. And we'll put all the links also over on jasonlinette.com forward slash the number 16. That's this week's episode with uh, social links and all of that too. It's been great having you on here. Any final thoughts for the listeners out there? You know what? Yes. You can create the life that you want to create. I don't care what industry you're in. You can, as long as you think you, you think you can, you can, right? I'm a big believer in that. What you think about, you bring about. And um, it's really just taking that, that next step, putting one step in front of the other. And don't feel like you have to be the absolute best. You just have to be one step ahead of someone who wants to do the things that you have done. That's it. 
and you can, you can teach them and you can help those people. So that's my final words for today. You have been listening to the Hypnotic Language Hacks podcast with Jason Lynette. Please stop everything and start exploring jasonlinette.com for even more business influence and persuasion resources. Make it a priority right now to subscribe to this program and listen to every episode because the next one may reveal that one hypnotic influence secret to massively scale your success. Change your words, change your business, change your life. Get even more at jasonlinette.com.